You're watching WOI-TV, Ames, Des Moines. And this is your news, 5 TV's Iowa News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Larry Meyer. And I'm Sarah Maltby. A state Democrat lawmaker says legislators may be restructuring Iowa's budget process. And Phil says you may want to take your umbrella today. There's a 30% chance of rain or freezing rain, but highs may reach into the mid-30s. Iowa House Speaker Don Avenson says legislators may use Governor Branstad's plan to restructure state government as a tool to seize control of the budget. Avenson says it is likely that lawmakers will approve a package that shifts control of the state's purse strings. The changes include forcing the governor to privately submit his budget proposals by January 1st of each year and hand over agency budget requests in December, set up a system and besides that, set up a system to inform lawmakers during the year about the state's tax receipts and organize a panel to assess state revenues independently from the governor. The bill has yet to get Senate approval. Governor Branstad is giving strong hints that we may soon have to buckle up. The governor said yesterday that he hasn't made a final decision yet, but he's leaning toward signing a bill that would require front seat riders to wear seat belts. When you look at the legislation and you balance the, the public safety and, and the lives that it would save uh, versus the infringement on the individual's right to choose whether they want to wear a seatbelt or not, uh, I, at least at this point, uh, seem to see the public safety uh, uh, being a greater consideration as you balance and weigh those considerations. If the bill becomes law, people who fail to buckle up in the front seat of cars could face a $10 fine as of July 1st. Branstad is expected to act on the bill in the next few days. Criminal sentences may be more fitting to the crime under a bill approved by the Iowa Senate yesterday. The bill expands the list of goals judges use to determine punishment. But the bill would not affect minimum and maximum sentence limits set down by state law. Currently, sentences are based on prospects for either rehabilitation or deterrence from future crimes. The bill is now before the House. Details are still sketchy about the murder of a Marion County man Monday. Authorities do say a number of people have been questioned, however, but no suspects have been taken into custody. Joanne Merrigan has this report. The body of Matthew Gasparovich was found about 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon in this house by a Marion County deputy. Officials say he died of multiple gunshot wounds and had been dead only a short time. Gasparovich's two children, a teenage son and a 12-year-old daughter, had taken his car earlier in the day but had not gone to school in Knoxville as they normally did. Instead, the children were found near Osceola after the car ran out of gas. The murder happened just a few miles from the small town of Columbia, a community of only about 100 to 150 people. As town folk talked of the crime, the investigation continued. Local authorities won't comment on whether Gasparovich's children are being questioned in connection with the case, although the state DCI says at this point no one has been ruled out as a suspect. Authorities say interviews and other work in the investigation will continue. Joanne Merrigan, 5 TV News. Agra Industries of West Des Moines has sold its Houston Export Elevator. The Houston-based real estate holding company has bought the Agra Elevator for an undisclosed amount. The, the elevator has been on the selling block for more than two years. Agra lost more than $21 million in its Considering a partnership with Cargill, the company will vote on the merger by Friday. And Phil, it's going to rain a little bit today, but yet it's going to get colder. That's right. Looks like our weather is in for a change, but for the worst, uh, looks like some snows in the forecast, just a little bit anyway. I'll tell you more after this. Well, quite a range of temperatures across the state of Iowa this morning. You can see up towards the north, temperatures are in the teens where that uh, cold Arctic air is trying to plunge down. I don't think it'll uh, move too far south uh, throughout the day today. 12 degrees in Spencer, 21 here in Des Moines, 29 in Lamoni and in the eastern part of the state. Just a little bit warmer, 34 degrees in the Quad Cities, and that's a warm spot in the state. Outside now in the metro area, it's 21 degrees in Des Moines, as I said, 19 in Ames. Humidity is at 88%. Barometer rising now from 29.83 
At last report, we had cloudy skies and fog. Northwest winds at 10 and a wind chill of 3 degrees above zero. Another strong storm moving into the western part of the nation, causing lots of snow and rain showers in the Pacific Northwest on down into California and into the Rocky Mountain states. Some flash flood warnings and winter storm warnings in effect for that part of the country. Here in the Midwest, meanwhile, nothing much going on right at the moment. Any precipitation is too light to be picked up by radar. And off to our east, some rain showers along the Great Lakes region on down into southern Indiana. As far as high temperatures go across the nation today, quite a temperature contrast across the nation. Temperatures uh, in the single digits below zero up towards the north all the way up to the 90s in parts of southern Texas. In between here in Iowa, we're looking for temperatures to be in the 20s north and the 30s central and south. Here's a forecast for central Iowa today, mostly cloudy and colder. A chance of rain or flurries with a high of 27. North winds 10 to 15. Then for tonight, cloudy, freezing rain or snow. Low down to 22. Northeast winds 10 to 20. And then for tomorrow, Cloudy, breezy, and cold, a chance of more freezing rain and snow, and I have 25, and that's the forecast for Wednesday and Thursday. Okay, thanks, Phil. Well, besides tucking away money for retirement, Paul Strassel says you should make plans about how to invest your money. In this morning's report, he offers some tips on how to avoid having your savings gobbled up by taxes. For those who are thinking of retiring soon, or who have already retired from the active workforce, the way you handle your retirement income can make a big difference in the amount of tax you have to pay every year. In addition to your Social Security benefits, which may be partially taxed, you'll probably have to pay tax on your corporate pension and withdrawals from your IRA and Keo accounts if you have them. When you get your money and what you do with it is very important. Here's what to keep in mind. If at retirement your employer gives you your entire retirement fund in one lump sum, you'll have to move quickly. You have 60 days to roll the funds over into an individual retirement account. Or if you're switching employers, the funds from one retirement account may be transferred into the pension plan of the new employer. That way you won't have to pay any income tax on the funds since you haven't actually received them. If you do decide to do absolutely nothing, you'll be taxed on the full amount. The only tax break you'll get is what's called 10-year forward averaging, which lets you spread the tax bite. You'll have to fill out IRS form 4972 special 10-year averaging method and attach it to your long form 1040. If you decide to receive your company pension in installments, you'll be taxed only as you receive it. Withholding on your pension checks, it's a good idea, especially if you want to avoid quarterly estimated tax payments. During retirement, you'll be tapping your IRA and self-employed retirement accounts. You don't actually have to start taking the money out until you reach age 70 and a half, although you can get into these accounts as early as 59 and a half. This is Paul Strassels reporting. We've got some announcements for Central Iowa this morning. The Des Moines Ballet will perform at Drake University Saturday and Sunday. For ticket information, call 282-3480. Camp Amanda is a weekend camp for kids who have had a death in the family. That runs this Saturday and Sunday. For information, call 276-2634. Well, coming up, I'll tell you about a special honor for an Iowa State University professor and how some Iowans are willing to go to great lengths to promote peace. We'll have more when we come back. Stay with us. Special honors were given to an ISU professor by the National Cattlemen's Association, Richard Wilhelm, a, a rather Richard Wilhelm, professor of animal science, has been given a 1986 research award in beef cattle production. Wilhelm is considered a international authority on the genetic improvement of beef cattle. The award also includes a $10,000 gift given to the association in Wilhelm's name. And now with a look at the morning market report, here's Don Christian. Barrels and gilts in Iowa and southern Minnesota yesterday were 50 cents to mostly a dollar lower than Monday. 1 to 3 grade, 210 to 250 pounds at Country Points and Plants, selling 42 to 43.50, with a few of plants topping at 44.50. Factors in the market were 1, lower wholesale pork prices, and 2, expectations of steady to lower cash hog prices today. Hog slaughter this week, 548,000, that's down 1% from last week's 556,000, and down 2% from a year ago is 562,000. Choice steers in Iowa and southern Minnesota yesterday were 50 cents lower. Choice 1,100 to 1,250 pound steers brought 55 to 55.50. Factors in the market were one, bearishly interpreted cattle on feed report released on Friday, and two, lower wholesale beef prices. Cattle slaughter this week, 224,000. That's down 8% from last week's 244,000 and down 5% from a year ago's 236,000. 
Iowa corn price trend yesterday was one to three cents higher. Central Iowa price was 212 to 235. Factors in the market were one, lower dollar value, and two, slow country movement. Iowa soybean price trend yesterday was one to three cents lower. Central Iowa price was 495 to 509. Factors in the market were one, uneasiness over potential effects of government farm policy, and two, stabilizing rains in mo moisture deficient Brazil which were negative factors. Well, some Iowans are headed for California today, and no matter how much fun they have, it'll be a long walk home. Kelly Seifert, Thad Matz, and Kaylin Murins are taking part in the Great Peace March. Their goal is nuclear disarmament. 20 Iowans will march 3,200 miles from Los Angeles to Washington, D.C. The trek will begin March 1st and will take eight months to complete. The group should hike through Des Moines in mid-July. Phil, I'm not going to tell you to take a hike with the weather, but what's going on? I probably should. Here's a quick look at the weather planner for today. We'll have foggy skies this morning, temperature right around 20. A chance to flurry through the lunch period and into the p.m. rush rush hour. Temperatures in the 20s throughout the day, so uh, not the nicest forecast in the world, but I guess we'll have to put up with it. Okay, That's thanks, cool. Phil. That's our news this morning. We'll have another newscast at 6.45. Stay with us. You are watching WOI-TV, Ames, Des Moines, and this is your news, 5TV's Iowa News This Morning. Here now are Larry Meyer, Sarah Maltby, and Phil Schreck. Good morning, I'm Larry Meyer. And I'm Sarah Maltby. Authorities continue to look for a Newton man who may have been the victim of foul play. And Phil says you better bundle up today because it's going to get colder. Marion County officials say two youths have been charged in a murder following the death of a rural Columbia man. 39-year-old Matthew Anthony Gasparovich was found dead in this house about 2 o'clock Monday afternoon by a Marion County deputy. Officials say he died of multiple gunshot wounds and had been dead for only a short time. Two of Gasparovich's children were found stranded after their car ran out of gas about 40 miles away from home. Police are not releasing the names of the two juveniles who are charged with that murder. And the Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation has been called in to help with a search for a Newton truck driver. 39-year-old Dwayne E. Wright has not been seen since last Thursday. Wright was last seen filling his semi-tanks at the Cyclone truck stop in Ames. Wright is described as 5 feet 8 inches tall and 165 pounds. He has blue eyes and black hair. Wright's truck was found unlocked with the keys still in it. Authorities say foul play may be involved. New figures from the Des Moines Police Department show Des Moines residents were victims of more crimes last month, 35% more than a year ago, January. 5TV's Mark Mills has details. To today's report, the city of Des Moines saw increases in the crimes of rape, robbery, assault, burglary, and auto theft. In January of 1985, there was one rape reported in Des Moines, but this past January, there were eight, an increase of 700%. The previous January saw 45 robberies, compared with 53 this year, an increase of 17%. There was an 83% increase in assaults, with 136 reported in January 1985 and 250 this year. Burglaries were up 32%, with 363 in the first month of 85 and 481 in 86. And this past January, 49 cars were reported stolen in Des Moines, compared to 31 last year, an increase of 58%. As could be expected, the number of arrests went up, too. And believe it or not, there is some good news in this report. In January of 1985, there were two homicides, and this past January, there was one. Mark Mills, 5 TV News. Governor Terry Branstad is supporting a $5 million tax credit for cattle farmers. Yesterday, Branstad said he thinks the state can afford to give livestock producers a tax credit for each head of cattle they raise in the state. The Senate Agriculture Committee approved a bill Monday that provides a tax credit of $3 per head. Branstad said says the state must do whatever it can to boost Iowa's slumping cattle industry. The continuing slump in the farm economy is being blamed for the 1985 farm credit system's loss. Officials for the system say the $2.69 billion deficit reflects low commodity and land prices and foreign competition. The FCS is a $70 billion cooperative banking system that provides most of the nation's agricultural loans. Yesterday's report says the loss came primarily during the last three months of 1985. And to update you this morning on the warning letters being sent out to farmers, 
The notices went out a week ago, and farmers are now picking them up at their local FMHA offices. Gary Barrett of Stewart, who we profiled last week, is one of the 3,000 farmers who are delinquent on their loans. Governor Branstad plans to take a trip to Washington next week to talk with other governors about the possibility of filing a lawsuit against FMHA. And Phil Shrek is here with a look at the weather, and he says that we could see some rain or snow today, Phil. That's right, Larry. None of that going on right now, though, but temperatures are quite a contrast across the state this morning. You can see off towards the north and west, temperatures are in the teens as that Arctic high pressure tries to push down into the northern plains. You can see 12 degrees at Spencer, 18 degrees at Mason City and Sioux City. Warmer, though, as you move off towards the southeastern part of the state, 34 degrees in the Quad Cities, 33 degrees in Burlington. Outside now in the metro area, it's 22 degrees in Des Moines, 19 in Ames. Humidity is at 88%. Barometer is now steady at 29.83, and at last report we had cloudy skies and fog. Northwest winds at 12 miles per hour and a wind chill of 2 degrees above zero. Now across the nation, here's what's going on. Another storm system pushing into the western part of the nation, bringing more snow and rain to parts of California and Oregon, just what they don't need. Here in the Midwest, though, a little bit quieter. As I said, high pressure trying to push down Arctic cold air into the northern plains, but I don't think it'll push down too far as the winds in the upper atmosphere are very strong from the west to east. And out to our east, uh, some snow and rain falling around the Great Lakes down into Indiana. As far as high temperatures go across the nation today, quite a contrast up to our north. Temperatures only in the single digits below zero, all the way up to the 90 degree uh, range in southern Texas. Uh, in, in between here in the Midwest, we'll see temperatures in Iowa in the 20s in the northern part of the state into the 30s in the southern part of the state. Here's your forecast then for central Iowa today. Mostly cloudy and colder, a chance of rain or flurries. A high of 27, then for tonight. Cloudy with freezing rain or snow, a low down to 22. Northeast winds at 10 to 20. And then for tomorrow, cloudy, breezy and cold, a chance of freezing rain and or snow, a high of 25 degrees. And that's the forecast for Wednesday and Thursday. Larry? Okay, thanks, Phil. And still to come, Roger Brown tells us about some pesty insects. We'll have more when we come back. When you see news happen, call us at 280-9740. In Ames, 294-4333. Or toll-free, 1-800-858-5555. Even though you probably wish that bugs weren't around to bug you, today on Town & Country we find out that those insects play an important role. Good morning everybody, Donald Lewis is with us again today. He's an extension entomologist here at Iowa State, talking about uh, bugs past, uh, talking about the effect insects have had on man throughout history. We think of uh, Worm affecting farmers, uh, uh, cockroaches uh, bothering us at home. But uh, centuries ago, insects shaped history. How so? Well, I think a good argument can be made that the insects have largely been responsible for human history and including the destiny of certain nations. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the geological record, we find that insects have been present for about